This is Still in the Clear, the podcast that distills the art and science of home distilling into easy to follow, audible nuggets for the beginning moonshiner. This information is for education and entertainment purposes only. You could even call it fiction if you want to. Home distilling may be illegal in your area. I'm your host, Cyrus, and I'm just a guy that lives in the woods and likes to make shine. So let's get into it. Before we get started today, I want to remind you about The MASH. The MASH is our free bi-weekly newsletter that's delivered straight to your inbox. Each issue is packed with all kinds of useful moonshine stuff. You don't want to miss it. So go sign up at stillintheclear.com slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the show notes. Just click on that link. It'll take you right to the page where you sign up. Just leave your name and your email. It's all you got to do, and that automatically signs you up. Well, March is Women's History Month, so I thought we would do another Moonshine History episode. Today, we're going to talk about some of the women of Moonshine History, but before uh, before we get into that, I would like to talk a bit about some of the really cool stuff that's been going on with Still in the Clear. Uh, we've had some really crazy growth since December of 2021. The Still in the Clear podcast community YouTube channel has been blowing up with thousands of new subscribers. Our Moonshine for Beginners group on MeWe.com has expanded membership to well over 600. I think we're probably closer to 700. Uh, this podcast is getting over a thousand downloads per month. So I wanted to send out a huge thanks to everyone who's been supporting and sharing still in the clear. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. So a really sincere thanks. Okay. Let's talk about these outlaw women of moonshine history. The first thing I found really interesting when researching this topic was that when it came to bootlegging, it is estimated that there were possibly twice as many female bootleggers than male bootleggers. And uh, that surprised me because, you know, you, you, you envision bootlegging and moonshining and you, you, uh, you get this sense that it's a kind of male dominated scene, but The fact that there were more women than men bootleggers is attributed to three very important factors. Um, When it came to the risks of being involved with the transportation of moonshine, especially during Prohibition, but even after. So one, not only were women rarely suspected of being involved with illegal alcohol distribution, but culturally at the time, it was even considered poor taste to even voice such a suspicion. Uh, Two, in most jurisdictions in the U.S., it was illegal to search a female. Three, juries would rarely convict a female for moonshine-related charges, and when they did, the penalties were so light that it just wasn't much of a risk for females. And so, when you consider those three things, and, you know, you're an outlaw, you're weighing the risk versus the reward. If you were a female back then, the risk just wasn't nearly as high as it was for a man. I think this is probably why we don't have the romanticized female moonshine hero, because under those circumstances, they weren't getting into high-speed chases with authorities and weren't wanted by authorities publicly. But there are legends that have survived of women shiners, and I've chosen two to highlight in this episode. There are many more. Uh, I could do several episodes about this topic. So one of the most famous was Maggie Bailey, also known as Queen of the Mountain Bootleggers. Maggie started selling moonshine in Harlan County, Kentucky when she was 17 and continued until she was 95 years old. And what I find interesting about Maggie's story is that she was prosecuted over a dozen times for selling moonshine, but was only ever convicted once in the 1940s and only had to serve 18 months in a federal prison. Her lawyer said that it was hard for the prosecutor to convict her because everyone in the county loved her. She would uh, feed families that were down on their luck and uh, she, it's even rumored that she, uh, sent several local children to college and she was a pleasure to be around and reminded you of your grandmother. 
And the prosecutors just couldn't paint her as a criminal to the jurors. And I'm, you know, I read this and I'm picturing Aunt B from Andy Griffith's show, you know, like just this sweet little old lady wearing an apron. And uh, even though Aunt B would probably uh, have been a member of uh, the women's temperance movement, but, um, you know, that's just kind of how I picture it. This sweet little old lady that's selling moonshine out of the back of her house. Maggie Bailey died in 2005 at the age of 101. Another interesting story is that of Josephine Duty of McCarthyville, Montana, also known as the Bootleg Lady of Glacier Park. So, as the story goes, she was a dance hall girl with an opium addiction, and one of the Glacier Park Rangers fell in love with her, kidnapped her, and held her at his cabin in the National Park to rid her of her addiction. And once her mind and body were cleared of the opium addiction, she found that she could tolerate Dan Duty, and they married. And uh, I just thought that was kind of funny, but she began selling... Uh, her moonshine out of their cabin, mostly to the railroad workers. And so the train would stop at the duty shingle and sound the whistle, uh, one whistle for every gallon she needed to bring to the train. And she would row the delivery across uh, Flathead River. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. And in 2009, a group of history buffs erected a tombstone at her unmarked grave that read Josephine Duty, October 16. 1853 to January 16th, 1936, the bootleg lady of Glacier Bay. So as you can tell, there were some um, pretty interesting female characters in the in our moonshine history. This was a tough episode because there were so many great legends of women shiners. I, I, I highly recommend doing some Google searches if this was interesting to you, because there's a lot to find. And, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I'll do another episode like this one and kind of highlight some of the others. But that's all we got for you this week. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Share this episode with people you think might enjoy it. That would be much appreciated. It'll sure help our show grow. And don't forget, doing is improving. Have a good one. Talk to y'all next week.